Now, my next guest, Mylene Class, has been campaigning tirelessly over the last few years to ensure women receive proper support after miscarriage. And I'm very pleased to say she joins us this morning. Mylene, firstly, congratulations with all of your work. It has not been easy. Yes. Um, but you've been campaigning tirelessly for reforms in this system. Um, where, where are you at at this point? What are the changes? I know implementation has to happen in full support of everyone around it, but what, what point are you at at this point? Um, I don't know if the word is glad to say, but I suppose hugely relieved to say that there has been one major, major change that people will feel, um, I suppose, immediately, more or less, and that is the fact that prior to this, uh, change in law, we had to wait for three miscarriages before you, there was any kind of medical intervention, which now, when you say it out loud, sounds barbaric, mm -hmm. so inhumane, because you wouldn't wait for three heart attacks before somebody gave you any kind of medical yeah. attention, whereby now, you, on your first miscarriage, will have a doctor or a GP or, or have some kind of guidance as to um, what kind of medical care you can go and seek out. Mm -hmm. um, on the second, again, more tests. And by the third, you've got a consultancy or a consultant level, specialist level uh, uh, um, a degree of uh, medical intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we've been campaigning for 24-7 care because as any woman who has uh, experienced the trauma of miscarriage will tell you psychologically it is well it is so impactful but what we have discovered is the levels of PTSD are the equivalent of a soldier returning from Afghanistan nine months later it, 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 that's the level that uh, miscarrying women are, are dealing with and all of this has come from research that I've been working with alongside um, Tommies who are actually rolling out the graded model of care which is also something that the government are going to <coughs> excuse me hopefully be following, um, which means that all around the country, irrespective of the postcode lottery as to where you may find yourself, you will have access either to EPUs or correct guidance as to where you should go for your miscarriage care. Because there is, there's a trial now being rolled out in, in Birmingham, I believe. Yeah, at which, Yes, so this is, it's, it's, it's placed there. So they're, they're going to wait until the end of the year to see how that goes. Surely that's going to pull up all well, sorts of... Someone needs to put the model together. Yeah. Because we know what's lacking and there are so many people saying, and we need to, to you know, where, where do we go for uh, the care of the family? Where do we go for the medical intervention? A lot of people don't even know about uh, progesterone. That that saves like eight and a half thousand babies every single year. But not many doctors uh, have been trained essentially because it is a specialist level of care to to give out that medicine. At the same time, it, it's saving my. Own, I, I I took progesterone for my fourth uh, for my fifth. Mm -hmm. um, baby. I had four miscarriages prior and this is something that myself and Olivia Blake, um, she's one of the good MPs, yes. um, myself and Olivia Blake, we've been campaigning for this change for so many years. I made a miscarriage documentary and that's where we first met and from that moment we realised we, we both had to take a different route and it has been one of campaigning because I, I, I didn't realise at the time in that traumatic state. I thought the answers lied in the medical field, but, but actually they lie at Westminster. Of course. Um, and you talk about your, the documentary and of course this campaign, Miley, but it can't always have been easy to revisit your own memories because like you say, there was four miscarriages. That's hugely traumatic, for not yes. just you, for your entire family. And that's what a lot of people also, the women, of course we suffer, but also the partner and the other children in the house who were potentially excited about the new baby. And it's very, very difficult for everybody involved. Miscarriage is a taboo. It's the final taboo in women's healthcare. For centuries, we've been taught just, you know, to keep it quiet. It makes everybody uncomfortable. Nobody wants to talk about that subject. And as women, we're expected just to make everyone else feel better around it. And yet the language around miscarriage is just all negative and women's healthcare uh, failed um, um, pregnancy, mm -hmm. uh, blighted ovum. A, a miscarriage everything is just shrouded in shame mm -hmm. so you never want to then be forthcoming with that information and it affects the entire family there are there are children who are expecting a brother or a sister there's a partner who feels completely helpless and we haven't even discussed the the, the paternal factors involved which is also something Tommy's are looking at you you might think your your partner's really healthy so you know all the problems and I say problems and you know sometimes we never get to the the root of why the miscarriages are happening but you might think 
think that it's you. It can often be that your partner's riding his bike too much or driving a lorry or drinking too much alcohol. There are also paternal factors involved. And that's why it's so important that we use all the information that's available to us. I would love to see data collection happen. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing on my list. Yeah. Um, it's, um, uh, you know, we're, there's we're, no real we're, record, is there? There's no we, record. We, we say one in four <laughs> pregnancies can end. Yeah, 44 a minute, 44 miscarriages a minute. And what's so damning is you hear the figure, but you don't see the trauma. You don't see the the pain that women go through. You don't see the social aspect, whether it, how it affects their work. It's costing this country at the minute 471 million pounds a year. That's something from a financial. Uh, status that we should very much address but what's the emotional impact on these women who want to be having these conversations or need to be addressing these medical problems and also our daughters and our sons Absolutely. I've made it very clear because when it happened to me I was so shocked and it's not because I thought you know I, I was untouchable it's because it just never occurred yeah that's exactly you don't it. have I suppose the training yeah I don't yeah. ever remember talking about it at school we don't talk about it so yeah, that's why I'm talking about it with my children and addressing it as you wouldn't get in a car. You wouldn't get in a car and say, you know, if, if the red lights start flashing, uh, what do I do? We give you a helpline, we give you a number, we, we get roadside There's assistance. There's a handbook. There's everything. Yes. Yeah. And so what happens if something goes wrong with your body? Mm -hmm. We don't even know who to call or, or, or what the correct avenue of, of help is. And that's why this graded model of care that Tommy's are rolling out and that myself and Olivia Blake have campaigned for tirelessly this is way overdue. So whilst we're, we, you know, we can't underestimate how big a win this is, yeah. for, for myself to hear, you're going to have to wait to have two more miscarriages before we address this. That's never going to be something my children or yours mm. or our friends or family are ever going to hear again. No, it's in incredible work, Mylene. How are the girls? I did <laughs> little Apollo. They're on holiday. So you're you're like beautifully talented musical family, I have to say. And little Apollo was just four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. big, big times <laughs> in your house, and it is. It's wonderful to see them. I can only imagine their reaction when you picked up the second I'm a celeb <laughs> trophy, <laughs> as it were. I'd, crown. I'd like to say that. <laughs> Uh, that they recognised me as the legend in the house, but I am still mum yes. who knows where all the socks are and who just delivers the laundry like the fairies. They just pull it back all the time, don't <laughs> it's they? It's unbelievable. Mylene, thank you. It's so important, the work that you're doing. And there's still a long way to go. You want to see lots of different things happening as the years go on, I guess, and see this implemented properly. But, but what a shift already. It's a huge and... shift. It's a shift. It's a huge win for, for women's health and... and... For, for mothers to be yeah. as well, so those little voices get heard. Wonderful, Mylene, thank you very much indeed. And if you've been affected by anything that we have just talked about, we do have help available on our website.